For our Ted Harrison landscapes, we're gonna draw with the oil pastels. Now, if you remember, oil pastels are a little softer and a little waxier than crayon. So what you wanna do, um, you really wanna use bright colors for this drawing. So we really wanna stay for stay away from black, even though they're in the bucket, we wanna try to pick out some of the brighter colors. So I'm gonna start with purple, and I'm just gonna start at the bottom of my drawing paper. You're gonna have a larger piece. This is just for an example. And I'm just gonna take the oil pastel, and I'm just gonna kinda create some land. I'm just using just a little bit of pressure because we want a really nice thick line. Um, because if you look at some of Ted Harrison's paintings, he has really bold lines, and that's one way that we're going to imitate his style. So I'm just going to create a little bit of land up in the front of my painting. You can pretend like this is snow or ice or something like that. And then I am going to create a horizon line, which is the line where the sky and the land meet. And I'm going to pretend like my horizon line is the line of my water. You can... Uh, Imagine this as an ocean, a lake, um, a lot of times up north in the, in the Yukon, they will call a body of water a fjord. Um, but you just want to create a nice flat horizon line um, that will represent your body of water. It's flat because if you look out across the horizon at a body of water, you see it as a flat line. Behind my water, I'm going to create some mountains, and I'm just going to use kind of a zigzag line for that just kind of across my paper. I think I'm gonna do one more set of mountains in the background of these. Maybe they're a little taller. Stick up behind it. And again, you'll notice that I'm pressing down pretty firm with my oil pastels because I really want that nice bold line. Um, now the last thing I'm gonna do is create a sun um, up in the sky, or you can think of it as a moon, because what we're really doing is creating the illusion of the northern lights. So kind of right out here in the middle, I'm just gonna do a big circle to represent a sun or a moon. And then I'm gonna take different color oil pastels, and I'm just gonna make some lines that kind of uh, come out from the sun or the moon and off to the edge of my paper. Now if you get to your mountains, you need to stop because your sky is behind your mountains and you do not want to draw through those. So just pick out a few different colors. You can do lines that kind of uh, make a squiggly line like that. You can do lines that make more of a curve coming out from your sun or moon. I'm just going to finish this off. The few you can also try using on this part a white oil pastel and in a minute when we paint you'll kind of see how that works and how that will stand out and remember always skip over your mountains when you're drawing your line so it looks like they're going back behind it um, a couple of other options you have when drawing your ted harrison landscape um, you can turn your paper uh, like we had it before or you can also turn your paper straight up and down like this um, you can create several different types of landscapes. I'm going to go over and make some of my land in the front. And this time, instead of creating my body of water, I'm going to go in the background and I'm going to create some mountains that kind of go all the way across the page. And then I see a lot of kids who want to maybe create something like a river coming out of their mountains. So what I'm going to do first is make that flat horizon line of my water. And then I'm going to pick a little valley, a little point that's pointing down in my mountain. And if you want to create something that looks like a river or a stream coming out of your mountain, just start at one of those little valleys and just kind of wiggle down the page till you touch your horizon line. And then what you want to do is go back up to the top. And at the top, you're going to start and you're going to be very close to your squiggle line. And as you go down, you're going to get bigger and bigger until you get close to your horizon line. And if you do something like that, you can make it look like there's a river running down into your lake or ocean. The reason why it is tiny when it's up close to the top is because things that are further away from you are smaller than things that are closer to you. So we would want our river or stream to be small at the top near the mountain and get larger as it comes down towards our body of water. Tricky. Now, once you have finished your drawing, we're gonna begin painting. We're going to be using the liquid tempera paints, and we have white, red, turquoise, pink, orange, and yellow. What I would like to do for these, you need to make sure you've got a clean brush. We want to make sure that these colors are really nice and thick. We don't want them to be really watery. So if your brush is really drippy with water, you need to just dab it on a sponge to kind of dry it off a little bit. 
One thing we're gonna do with this painting is similar to when we painted the Starry Night in fourth grade. We're gonna double load our brush. Now to do that, I'm gonna dip my brush in the white paint first, and then I'm gonna pick another color to load onto my brush. This time I did turquoise. And then if you remember from the Starry Night, what you can do is you can actually mix those together on your paper to create a lighter blue. This is so we can change and we can, um, we can change our colors and make them lighter and we can come up with different types of shades so that we have all different types of colors in our painting. The one thing I ask is that you only mix colors with white, okay? We don't wanna mix the red and the purple together or the orange and the red together or something like that because there's a chance that we could really start to make our paints muddy. So we only wanna mix them with white. We also want to be sure that we always dip our brush in white first to double load it and then pick up a color. That way our white paint will stay nice and clean. So you're just gonna continue to double load your brush. You can use a little bit of white to just barely change the color or you can use a lot of white um, to really make it light. And one thing you wanna be really, really careful of, and I just kinda messed up a little bit right there, when you get close to your oil pastel lines, you really want to slow down. Let me get that mix. And you really wanna just sneak up on them. We don't wanna paint over our oil pastel lines because if you look at Ted Harrison's paintings, you can still see those bold lines of color in between all of the areas that he has painted solid. So I'm gonna finish up this painting. Our painting is almost complete at this point. Once you have filled in all of your different spaces with color, what I would like for you to do is go back and pick out the same color oil pastels you used before and just go back over those lines with really, really firm pressure because chances are you may have gotten a little bit of paint over the top. And if we take the time to go back and trace back over all of our lines, then we can ensure that all of our lines are really nice and crisp and filled in and it'll really help make our uh, painting reach that kind of high quality level that we're going for in all of our artwork this year. One last tip to make your Ted Harrison landscapes um, look a little better is to be a little consistent in your color. Like down here on the bottom, I use red, or I used red, and I started out with just the plain red with no white added. I added a little bit of white and then a little bit more white. This makes my landscape at the bottom look different, but it all is still in the same color family. The same thing with your mountains. If you have mountains that go all the way across your page, it's usually a good idea to start with one color and then continue that on over just like I've done here with both of my mountains in the front um, being filled in with kind of the magenta pink. And then I did the same thing in the background. I started with orange over here and I continued that across my mountain range to the other side. That helps things be a little bit more consistent and not be so choppy with color. Um, the way you can have fun with color is in the sky by adding all of those different swirls um, to represent the different colors of the northern light.